guys, it's Teresa. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to continue the series of videos on the topic of like looking back on 2017. And I wanted to do something similar to the, um, what's it called? Media book freakout tag. Um, and just do a similar thing with some different questions as well um, about 2017. Now, um, I don't know if this tag in this form already exists. You can let me know in the comments down below. Um, I've never seen anything like this before. Maybe something similar with like slightly different questions. I don't know. But uh, if it doesn't exist, you can definitely use this as an original tag video and uh, do the tag as well. I tag everyone, basically. So it is still the middle of December and so far I've read 99 books. My goal on Goodreads was 100 and I'm definitely going to hit that. So um, I don't know how much I will read all together by the end of the year. But that's a lot of books and that means that there's a lot of highlights <laughs> that can be found. And the first question is what is the longest book you've read this year? I read It by Stephen King which was over 1,300 pages long. I don't know the exact page count but it doesn't matter because nothing even came close to that. It was a chunker. I read it in like two weeks which is a lot. Uh, well, it's a lot to read in two weeks I think especially if it's the same story and like one book and you just kind of... It was a lot. But um, I really loved it. It was great for the most part <laughs> except for the ending. And then, then corresponding with that, what is the shortest book you've read? And that I actually have here with me. I don't read a ton of short books. <clears throat> and I specifically decided to exclude novellas and stuff like that because obviously they'd be a lot shorter, I like short stories. Um, I did read a few novellas in spring or something, but like, they're obviously short. But like the shortest actual book I read was Attack of the 50 Foot Blockchain by David Gerard. This is 140 pages and it's, yeah. It's very short. What is the most disappointing book that you read this month? Now obviously I will be doing a separate entire video about my most disappointing books of 2017 but I still wanted to sneak the question in here a little bit to answer to pick just like one disappointing book and for this I'm going with the Six of Crows duology by Leigh Bardugo. Not because it was a horrible horrible series but just because it did not live up to my expectations. It did not live up to the hype at all and for me and uh, it just wasn't that great especially book two was pretty bad. Ugh, I don't, I don't think it deserves the hype that it gets basically. On the flip side what is the most surprising book that you read and for me that would be Arabella of Mars by David D. Levine. This is also a YA book and it is just so well done. For me it is so much better than like 99% of all YA fantasies or like what did it even call like it's a sci-fi I guess like alternate universe steampunk something like that <laughs> I don't really know but it's really really well done it's really fun to read it's written in a language that's not dumbed down and like made stupid it does have a few tropes but like they're all kind of done well and I think that they're all fun so I really didn't mind too much it just it was overall really surprising and I hear basically no one talk about it so I thought I'd mention it in this video because it deserves more people to read it and then we have the worst book of 2017 and for this I'm going with These Violent Delights by Victoria Nam Kong. I recently just did a rant review about it and um, I will link it if you want to know more about my thoughts on this. It has a lot of negative messages I think. It's poorly written, poorly done. I really disliked it and uh, again this is a topic I will do a whole other video about on the worst books that I read this year but I just wanted to pick out one just quickly to talk about here. And then obviously what is the best book that you've read this year and this is the worst question to ask anyone I know um, and I will also do a video on it la -di -da -di -da. but my very best book I think that I've personally read this year that I just like loved so much that stuck with me for the longest time because it's been months since I've read it and I still talk, think about it and like talk about it to people and that is Stay With Me by Ayubami Adebayo. The book blew me out of the water. Is that even a phrase? <laughs> it is extremely well done. It is heartbreaking. It's so well written. I could not put it down when I was reading it. And I can't believe that this is a debut novel. It is a debut novel, right? Like, it's just, holy shit. She is so talented. This book deserves all of the awards. I don't know why I didn't get the Bailey's Prize for Women's Fiction because it really would have deserved it. Anyway, you have to read this book. It is so fantastic. 
Okay, next question. What is a completely new topic that you read something about this year or uh, that you got into this year? And uh, for me, that is China. That's a very broad topic I know about because I started um, studying Chinese studies at university this fall. I started getting really, really interested in Chinese history and politics and society and stuff like that. And I started reading a lot of historical fiction particularly, but also some nonfiction. And I've really been enjoying everything about it. And I like kind of want to know more and more and more and more about... Um, that topic and it's definitely I'm really glad that I discovered this new topic for me this year. And then also, what are some new authors that you've discovered and fallen in love with this year? And I have a whole list of new authors. Um, it's that I like read for the first time this year and then fall, fallen in love with. I should mention Ayubami Adebayo as well. Um, so first, obviously Ayubami Adebayo. I've only read one book by her, but I really fell in love with it. Stephen King, Robin Hobb, Lake Crouch, Jeff Vandermeer, Leanne Moriarty and Margaret Atwood. So those are all some really great authors that I read for the first time this year and uh, loved for the most part. And if not completely 100% love, then at least I want to read more by them in the future. What is a genre that you have abandoned this year? And for me, I've mentioned it before, that is definitely YA. Um, I've not completely abandoned it. I will come back to it here and there, but um, I'm just like, it's just why. <laughs> and what is a genre that you've newly discovered for yourself? And that for me is several. Um, I don't know if you consider this a genre, but audiobooks. I've started, um, because of my free audible trial, I've started listening to some audiobooks. Um, and I quite enjoy it when they're non-fiction. Um, I've listened to only non-fiction audiobooks, but I really like it because it's basically like listening to a podcast and people teaching you things, which is nice. And um, some other genres that I've gotten into more are definitely non-fiction and also science fiction. What is your biggest booktube or bookish regret this year? I don't have too big of a regret uh, when it comes to this, but I think that I should have um, put a little bit, bit more time into my videos on audiobooks just because some people got really confused by my opinion. And I will say it has changed a little bit since doing this video, so that's even more confusing. But um, yeah, I, I, I should have just I guess like sat down before and like made sure I knew what I was gonna say and then said it that way instead of um, you know saying it like in in a way like yeah this could be misconstrued to mean something entirely different even though that's not what I'm getting at and uh, it just um, kind of caused a whole lot of confusion I think. And the second thing is just kind of like a, a thing that I in general that bothers me with myself is that sometimes I sit down and film a video and I'm very like impassioned and like I have feelings um, fueling my words and then they come on jumbled and like not structured well and like I have fragmented sentences that are a pain to edit and I really wish that I would stop doing that. <laughs> it's something I, I really want to work on. And that kind of ties into my biggest accomplishment because I think that I have been working on it and I think that I've uh, been getting better at it, um, which is nice, but I still have a long way to go, but it's, you know, it's something. Another thing I'm really proud of is that uh, I've sort of set a fixed uploading schedule and stuck to it for like 99% of the year so that is wonderful I'm super proud of myself for that and also that I finally finished some books in Japanese this year I fully read like three books in Japanese this year um, one of them was a manga but still and I am so proud of myself for doing that so yeah those are some great accomplishments of mine I think and just to close it off um, a little bit of a book buying set of questions and um, the first is what is a book that you regret buying this year and for me that has to be uh, let me show you winter by marissa maya um i don't know why i bought it i really don't i've read the rest of the series but obviously as i've said before i'm not as into ya anymore and i genuinely don't want to read it so why the fuck did i buy it i really don't know also because it's like 800 no yeah 800 pages long I mean, I don't know if I can do it. When will I read it? I don't know. I'm not gonna unhaul it like the same year I bought it, but like, I'm just, I don't know why I bought it at all. I really don't. And then lastly, what is a book that you, the happiest that you've bought? And with this, I don't mean just because you love the content, but just like, why are you so happy that you own it specifically? Not just that you read it, but that you own it. And for me, those are two books. The first, is um, this bind up of Philip Pullman's Historic Materials trilogy. First of all, I love this edition. Second of all, this was very inexpensive considering it consists of three books. And thirdly, this it's just a wonderful series and I had only owned 
the first two books in German and I was never going to reread them in German and I just reread re -read the first book recently and it got me back into this universe and into this world and I was like I need to re I love it so much again and I mean I don't know there's just like so many reasons why I'm super glad I bought this book and that I own it and I can't wait to finish the trilogy finally. And the second book I'm really happy I own is The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry. Um, I did enjoy this book but it wasn't anything overly special, I would say, but mostly I just am so happy that I bought it because of the cover. <laughs> it is absolutely stunning. I know there's another edition that's more blue than green, and it's also just incredibly beautiful. And I don't know, I just love that I own it. <laughs> um, it's obviously plus that I also enjoyed the book, but I think I enjoy the cover more than the contents <laughs> at the end of the day. And that is it for this My Bookish Highlights video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave your own bookish highlights in the comments down below or as I said, feel free to film your own video and send it to me because I'd love to see it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you very soon with another probably recap video of 2017. <laughs> Have a lovely week. Bye!